The topic for this session is new enhancements we are building into the ZOS encryption readiness technology. I will do a quick review of CERT as it exists today in V2R4, and then I want to spend the bulk of the time on the CERT policy enforcement feature. Let's get started with the first topic. Here we're going to talk about what CERT is and the functions that are built into the TCPIP stack. To give some background information, ZOS provides multiple mechanisms to cryptographically protect network traffic. Most popularly used is Transport Layer Security Protocol, TLS, to protect TCP traffic. Um, there are two main approaches to using TLS on ZOS. With the first approach, your applications can directly use one of the TLS libraries depending on which language your application is running in. The TLS libraries available on ZOS are Java Secure Sockets Extensions, JSSE for Java applications, and System Secure Socket Library, System SSL for C, C++ applications. The second approach is you can use the application transparent TLS provided by ZOS Communication Server. In ADTLS, instead of modifying each application to use TLS, you write policy rules that describe the traffic that you want to protect and how you want to protect it. When connections match those rules, ATTLS calls system SSL to negotiate TLS protection using the parameters specified in the policy rule. This is typically transparent to the application. Another popularly used secure security protocol on ZOS is IPsec. IPsec is a network layer protocol that can protect any IP-based traffic like TCP, UDP, ICMP, and so on. IPsec is also configured using policy rules in ZOS communication server. And then we have a version of OpenSSH, which also protects TCP-based traffic. With this variety of protocols and configuration options, there is also a wide var variation in the audit trails provided by these implementations, especially in cases where applications are calling the TLS libraries directly. Given the spectrum of available options and all the different workloads, it is challenging for a network security administrator to understand what security mechanisms, if any, are being used. The most common questions that come up are which traffic is protected and which is not. For the traffic that is protected, how is it protected? Is it using IPsec or TLS? Is it TLS 1.2 or some weak TLS protocol version? Next common question is who does the traffic belong to? So say that you find a weak protocol is being used, who do you contact to bridge the gap? And finally, do the existing and new configurations adhere to the security policies? These are the regular kinds of questions that auditors ask to ensure that you are compliant. ZERT is designed to specifically answer all these questions, and we'll see how in the upcoming slides. So what is ZERT? ZERT is a function of the TCPIP stack that monitors and collects cryptographic protection attributes for all your TCP and enterprise extender connections. For TCP, we recognize TLS, SSH, IPsec, and unprotected traffic. Note that if it is protected in any other way that ZERT doesn't recognize, we report it as unprotected traffic. For enterprise extender, the only way to protect this traffic on ZOS is via IPsec. So we recognize both IPsec and unprotected. There are two ways that ZERT collects the cryptographic attributes of the connection. The first one is called stream observation. What that means is when a TCP connection is established, ZERT will start watching byte by byte the traffic that flows over the connection. The stack observes just long enough to determine if there is a TCP, TLS, or SSH handshake. If it recognizes one of those, then it collects the information that it needs about the handshake and stops. Or if it doesn't recognize one of those, it will stop immediately. We do that for a short period of time for performance reasons. 
The second way the stack learns information is by the cryptographic protocol provider that is protecting the connection itself. When the cryptographic protocol provider is aware of ZERT, they call ZERT and provide additional information that the stack is unable to absorb. Things like certificate information or when there is a change in protection halfway through the connection. The protocol providers that are aware of ZERT are System SSL, ZERT JSSC, OpenSSH, and IPsec. The information is collected in memory and can be reported through SMS 119 records. They can either be written to the system management facility SMS or the real-time network management interface NMI provided by ZOS communication server. You can also write to both these interfaces at the same time. There are three main phases of ZERT. The first phase of ZERT is discovery, which monitors, collects, and records cryptographic attributes on a per-connection basis. This information is written out as a SMF-119 subtype 11 record called ZERT connection detail. With ZERT discovery, you get at least one SMF record per TCP or enterprise extender connection. Depending on your workload, that could mean a lot of SMF records. But this is well suited for real-time monitoring applications. The second phase of ZERT is called aggregation. Aggregation focuses on the reuse of security sessions over time instead of a per connection basis. For example, if a client repeatedly connects to the same server using the same security settings for a short period of time, aggregation will record the endpoint and the security attribute information called security session. It also maintains a count of how many connections have been protected by that security session over time. At the end of the recording interval, ZERT aggregation writes one SMF record for every security session that was in use during that interval. This information is written out as a subtype uh, 12 record called ZERT summary. The real advantage here is that you get the same amount of cryptographic details as discovery with far fewer SMF records. The third phase of ZERT is the ZERT Network Analyzer. It is one of the applications that uses the subtype 12 records that were generated by ZERT aggregation. Um, ZERT Network Analyzer is a ZOSMF plugin that ingests ZERT summary records from SMF dump datasets and stores the data in a DB2 for ZOS database. Users can then query the data in ways that will answer their questions about their ZOS network protection. This ZOSMF plugin can be easily made available to your ZOS network security administrators. User access to this plugin is controlled through a new SAF resource. Every PTF we ship for ZERT Network Analyzer is a full replacement, so if you decide to try it out, you can just apply the latest PTF. So what data does ZERT collect and record? We've divided this into two main categories, significant attributes and informational attributes. What we mean by significant attributes is if one of these attributes change during the life of a connection, it would make a significant change in the cryptographic protection of that connection. Significant attributes can either be identifying attributes like IP addresses, ports, job name, etc or protection attributes like the protocol version, cryptographic algorithm, key lens, and so on. The significant attributes are written to both subtype 11 and subtype 12 records. On the other hand, informational attributes, while interesting, don't influence the strength of the cryptographic coverage. For example, the certificate serial number or expiration date. The informational attributes are only written to subtype 11 records. It is important to know that ZERT does not collect, store, or record any secret values at all. So the keys themselves, initialization vectors, or any other secret values that are negotiated are not collected by ZERT. The other thing to know is that ZERT only monitors the cryptographic attributes of the connections that terminate on the local ZOS TCPIP stack. So that means that the socket endpoint is owned by something running on the ZOS system. 
we do not monitor any routed traffic. Let's talk a little about configuration. The configuration for ZERT discovery and ZERT aggregation go in the TCP IP profile. On the global config statement, we have a ZERT parameter that controls an in-memory collection of data. One thing to note here is that the in-memory collection can be enabled independent of where the records are going to be written to. The default here is no ZERT. There is a subparameter called aggregation to enable the ZERT aggregation function. As of June 2020, there is a new subparameter int val to specify the aggregation specific recording interval that is not tied to the SMS interval. Uh, we've had a number of clients come in and say that the reduction by aggregation is definitely good, but they don't need an aggregation record at every SMS interval. They want to further reduce the number to one or two a day. So this int val parameter allows you to do that. You can specify recording intervals between one and 24 hours at a one hour increment. Now let's look at how you configure the destination. As I mentioned earlier, you can write these records to two places, SMF or NMI. The SMS config statement in the TCP IP profile controls the writing of ZERT records to SMF. ZERT detail is for subtype 11 and ZERT summary is for subtype 12 records. The default is to not write any of these. You can enable one or both of these records to be written to SMF here. Similarly, for real-time monitoring services, we have the net monitor statement. ZERT service is for subtype 11 and ZERT summary is for subtype 12 records. So if you have a real-time monitoring application that consumes subtype 11 record, you want to enable net monitor ZERT service. These parameters can be enabled or disabled dynamically and can also be configured via the Network Configuration Assistant for ZOS Communication Server. We have the NetSat config and display TCP IP commands to help you verify your configuration is what you want. We have quite a few products, both IBM and vendor products, that have built functions based on the data that ZERT provides. This list has been growing pretty steadily since we first introduced ZERT in V2R3. So this is not a comprehensive list. These are the ones that we are aware of at this point in time, but there certainly can be others as well. The main point here is that if you have ZERT enabled, chances are that you already have a product that consumes the records and that allows you to analyze the data to your advantage. In addition to this, we also have the ZERT network analyzer that we already talked about. There are a few limitations of ZERT. I'm not gonna go through them in detail, but I wanna point out a couple of things. When there are connections monitored by stream observation only, there is a limited number of attributes that we can collect there. As I mentioned before, the information we get from a ZERT enabled protocol provider is more detailed than we can get from observation. Also, protection by cryptographic protocols other than TLS, SSH, and IPsec are not recognized by ZERT. So these connections will be reported as having no recognized cryptographic protection. One other key point I wanna mention here is that ZERT only monitors the connections that terminate on the local TCP IP stack. We, don't, we do not monitor any routed traffic. The reason I'm mentioning that is in ZOS V2R4, we introduce a new feature called ZOS Container Extensions, where we run a Linux virtual machine on ZOS, and you can run Docker images on top of that. The way we do that is by routing the traffic to the container extensions through the TCP IP stack. Since this is routed traffic, ZERT does not monitor any of the traffic that terminates in the ZOS container extensions. Please see the ZOS communication server IP config guide for a complete list of limitations. What we talked so far is the ZERT function as it exists today. Now let's focus on the new function, which is the ZERT policy-based enforcement.
This is the IBM statement of direction that was announced in March of 2021 with regards to ZERT policy-based enforcement. In a nutshell, ZERT policy-based enforcement enables immediate notification, auditing through SMS records, and automatic termination of connections when questionable or unacceptable cryptographic protection is used. Uh, this function will be available in V2R5. ZERT policy-based enforcement, or ZERT enforcement in short, is the fourth and final piece that completes the vision of ZERT. ZERT enforcement enables the TCPIP stack to enact on the data collected by ZERT for real-time notifications and even real-time defensive actions as configured in a policy. ZERT enforcement policy rules describe acceptable or unacceptable cryptographic protection attributes for TCP connections, and any appropriate actions to take when a connection matches the rule. For example, if you describe an acceptable protection, then the action may be to allow the connection. If you describe unacceptable protection, then the action may be to log to syslog B or write an audit record for that connection. The TCPIP stack then compares each new TCP connection that terminates on that stack with the set of ZERT enforcement rules. If the connection matches a rule, the actions associated with that rule are taken. One thing to note is that ZERT enforcement does not apply to enterprise extended traffic. It only applies to TCP connections. This is a new technology implemented in Policy Agent, and the Network Configuration Assistant guides you through building the ZERT policies. We'll talk more, or more about that in the upcoming slides. This slide shows the big picture of how the ZERT policy-based enforcement works. The initial step is for a ZOS administrator to build a ZERT policy using the Network Configuration Assistant in ZOSMF. As mentioned, each ZERT rule defines connection attributes, cryptographic attributes, and the actions to take when that rule is matched. Once the ZERT policy is complete in the NCA, the generated policy file can be transferred to the target ZOS system. The policy agent on that system passes and installs the ZERT policy into the ZERT enforcement component of the TCPIP stack. When new connections are established, inbound or outbound, ZERT discovery is used to determine if TLS, SSH, or IPsec cryptographic protection is being used to protect that connection. Once the connection attributes are determined, the ZERT enforcement component compares the attributes of the connection to the ZERT policy rules for that security protocol. If the connection matches, then the actions associated with that rule are enforced by ZERT. This may include allowing the connection, which is the default, writing a message to syslog B, writing a message to the console, writing an SMS record for that connection, or even terminating the connection. ZERT rules are associated with a specific security protocol and thus are grouped into four rule sets. One rule set for each protection mechanism, TLS, IPsec, and SSH, and one rule set for unprotected, which is basically no recognized protection. A single connection is evaluated against the ZERT rules governing whichever security protocols are used for that connection. For a given security protocol, say there will be a general rule with the highest priority that describes the generally accepted levels of protection. For example, TLS version 1.3 or TLS version 1.2 with acceptable symmetric encryption, message authentication, and key exchange algorithm. The typical action here is to silently allow the connection because these protection attributes meet the standard. Next, there will be one or more specific rules with a lower priority of specific, for specific workloads. These can either be exceptions to the generally accepted standards, but you accept them, or, or cases that should be flagged or blocked. For example, you could have a set of clients for a specific workload that you know are using a TLS protocol that is not generally accepted, 
but the clients are in the process of being upgraded. For such exceptions, you might want to allow the connections without taking any action. However, there might be some TLS protocols that should never be used. For such cases, the action to take might be to reset the connection and log a message to the console so you can be notified of such cases. Finally, uh, there will be a catch-all rule for any connection that does not match the general rule and does not match any of the specific rules defined. This rule defines what to do when ZERT sees a connection that doesn't meet the other rules for the security protocol. A typical action for this might be to log the connection to syslog D and or write uh, an, an audit record to SMS. As I mentioned on the previous slide, ZERT rules are evaluated per security protocol that is used to protect a connection. So basically, if a connection is protected with TLS, it is evaluated against the ZERT rule set for TLS. If a connection is protected with IPsec, it is evaluated against the ZERT rule set for IPsec. That's what one connection can match multiple rules if a connection is protected with multiple security protocols. This is different from other policy types such as ADTLS where a connection can match only one rule. Next, uh, if a connection does not match any ZERT rule, no action is taken. I want to point out here that there may be specific events like a change in the cryptographic protection of the connection that will drive ZERT enforcement to reevaluate against the rule set for a new protocol. For example, if an FTP connection was protected by TLS and had matched to a ZERT rule for TLS, and then the user issued a command to clear the protection on the control connection with a CCC command, um, ZERT will now reevaluate the connection against the no protection rule set at that point. The network configuration assistant will guide you through the creation of these rule sets. We have a separate session called Using Network Configuration Assistant to Configure ZERT Policy Enforcement um, that will go into the details on how to configure ZERT policies. The categorization of rules as general rules, specific rules, and catch-all rules is purely a NCA terminology. The important thing to note is that ZERT rules are searched within a rule set for the first match, starting with the highest priority rule in a rule set. ZERT policy, like any other policy type, allows you to specify conditions in a rule. There are connection attributes and protection attribute conditions. You can describe the connection attributes with local and remote IP addresses and port, job name, user ID that open the socket, and connection direction like inbound and outbound. With protection attributes, you can go into the cryptographic details, uh, like security protocol. For TLS and SSH, you can specify the protocol version. And then you have the symmetric encryption message authentication and key exchange algorithms. You can specify your criteria for each of these algorithms. Note that we don't support digital signature algorithms in V2R5. We would like to do that in the future. The actions you can specify in a ZERT rule are to take a reporting action or to reset the connection. We have three reporting actions you can specify. First one is to log a message to syslog D. Second one is to log a message to the console, which goes to the TCPIP job log. And the third one is to write an audit record, that is SMS 119 subtype 11, with a new event type that indicates that the record was written as a result of ZERT enforcement. These actions can be used in combination on a single rule. We we'll look into each of these actions in detail in the upcoming slides. The default action, that is when none of the actions is specified, is to silently allow the connection. The first logging action is log to syslog D. When this action is specified, ZERT enforcement logs a message about the connection matching the associated ZERT rule to the syslog daemon. The messages are logged to syslog D using facility local 5. The syslog D priority is determined by the log level parameter. 
valid values for the log level are in the range 0 to 7, the default value is 4, which is warning. Note the Traffic Regulation Manager daemon TRMD, must be active for any TCIP stack where the ZERT enforcement log to syslog D action is being specified. TRMD retrieves the ZERT syslog D messages from the TCIP stack and writes them to the syslog daemon. The second logging action is log to console. When this action is specified, ZERT enforcement logs a WTO message about the connection matching the associated ZERT rule to the TCPIP job log. Here's an example of message EZZ8583I written to syslogd when the log to syslogd action is specified. The first part of the message indicates that the connection was logged by ZERT policy enforcement. The timestamp indicates the date and time when the connection was detected to match a ZERT rule with the log action. The message contains TCP connection information, security information, and matching ZERT rule information. The TCP connection information consists of the connection ID that uniquely identifies the connection local IP and port, remote IP and port, transport protocol use, which in this case will always be TCP, job name of the application that is associated with this connection, user ID that opened the socket for this connection, and the connection direction, whether inbound or outbound. The, secu the security information displayed in the log message are the security protocol that triggered the event, security protocol version, symmetric encryption, message authentication, and key exchange algorithms used to protect the connection. Note that some of these values are applicable to certain security protocols only. Like for example, the security protocol version and key exchange algorithms are applicable to TLS and SSH only. For connections protected by SSH, both the inbound and outbound symmetric encryption and message authentication algorithms are included. Similarly, for connections protected by IPsec, both phase one and phase two tunnel encryption and authentication algorithms are included. The last part of the message indicates the names of the matching ZERT enforcement rule in action. When both the log to syslog D and reset TCP connection actions are specified, the generated log message is EZZ8584I. The first part of the message indicates that the connection was reset. The remaining information is, is the same as the previous uh, message. There are similar messages written to the TCPIP job log when log to console is enabled. Here's an example of the message when both log to console and reset actions are specified. The content of the message is similar to what's written to syslog D. As I mentioned before, the ZERT enforcement log messages are written on a per connection basis. To prevent flooding the syslog D and the console, ZERT enforcement monitors and limits the number of messages that are written in five minute intervals. If the same ZERT rule is matched more than 10 times, or if 100 messages have been logged across all the ZERT rules within a given five minute interval, the subsequent ZERT messages are suppressed. An exception is made to ensure that at least one message is written for every unique ZERT rule that is matched within a given five minute interval. For example, if the 100 messages limit has already been reached, and a connection maps to a ZERT rule that has not been matched yet in that given interval, a message will be written for that connection. Any subsequent matches to that rule during the five minute interval will be suppressed. I want to point out here that log messages can only provide an awareness that connections are matching a particular ZERT rule. If a complete record of connections matching a ZERT rule is needed, the audit record action should be used. After the five minute interval, the next time a connection matches a ZERT rule with log action, a message will be written for that rule. Along with that, a log suppress message is also written that indicates how many ZERT messages were suppressed for that rule in the previous interval. 
So it gives you an idea of how many connections match that rule for which messages were suppressed. The next third enforcement action we're going to talk about is audit record. When audit record action is specified, an SMF 119 subtype 11 record with a new event type ZERT enforcement is written to SMF or NMI or both, depending on the configuration in the TCIP profile. For these policy-driven subtype 11 records to be written to SMF, SMF config ZERT detail by policy parameter must be specified in the TCIP profile. Note that this is different from the existing ZERD detail parameter that controls whether subtype 11 is written for TCP and EE connections on initiation, termination, and change in protection. Having separate controls allows for policy-based recording of subtype 11 records without having to enable ZERD detail that will write out SMS records for all TCP and EE connections. Similarly, for the policy-driven records to be written to the SysTCPER NMI service, net monitor ZERT service by policy parameter must be specified in the TCPIP profile data set. This is a display of the SMF 119 subtype 11 record written to SMF. This formatted output is just for illustration purposes. It is from a homegrown tool that we have internally and it's not a product display. The event type field indicates that the record was written by ZERT enforcement when a connection matched a ZERT rule with audit action. Most of the remaining output is the same as the existing subtype 11 record for other event types, so I won't go into the details of that. But at the end, if you see, there is a new section called ZERT policy based enforcement section. It contains the ZERT rule names that are associated with the connection. So if a connection is protected by multiple security protocols, let's say IPsec and TLS, this uh, section can include the matching ZERT IPsec policy rule name and the matching ZERT TLS policy rule name, depending on the event that caused the record to be written. As mentioned earlier, ZERT enforcement uses the information collected by the ZERT discovery function. So if global config ZERT is not enabled in the TCPIP profile, but a ZERT policy exists, an error message EGZ8564I is written to the console when the ZERT enforcement policy is installed in the TCPIP stack. Similarly, if there is at least one ZERT enforcement rule with audit record action, and neither ZERT detail by policy nor that service by policy is enabled in the TCPIP profile, then an error message EZZ8565I will be written to the console. The last ZERT enforcement action you can take is to reset a TCP connection. Note that the reset occurs only after a connection is in established state. ZERT observation has detected a security protocol is in use or detected that no recognized protection is in use, and the connection is mapped to a rule that contains a reset action. Uh, I also want to point out that the reset action does not log a message automatically, so it is recommended that you specify a log action, either log to syslog B or log to console when you specify the reset action. When a connection is reset, a flag is set in the subtype 11 record for event types connection termination and short connection termination that indicates that the connection was reset by ZERT enforcement. A similar flag is set in the subtype 2 TCP connection termination record as well. You can also use the netstat all report to see the matching ZERT policy rules that were found for each connection. If a connection is protected by more than one protocol and has matching ZERT rules for those protocols, this display will show all the matching ZERT rule and action names. In this example, the connection is protected by IPsec and TLS and has matching rules for both those protocols. To summarize, there are four main functions in ZERT, ZERT discovery, ZERT aggregation, ZERT Network Analyzer, and ZERT Policy-Based Enforcement. 
So discovery monitors, collects, and records cryptographic attributes on a per-connection basis. This is well suited for real-time monitoring applications. That aggregation, on the other hand, summarizes the repeated use of security sessions without compromising the reporting of essential security information about the network. This is well suited for historical reporting applications. ZERT Network Analyzer is a UI to analyze the ZERT data. It helps you narrow down to only the connections you are interested in and find the needle in the haystack. The last one, ZERT Policy-Based Enforcement, lets you tell the TCPIP stack to act on the data collected by ZERT per your policy. The policy actions may include anything from simple notification to termination of the connection thus providing real-time monitoring, auditing, and defensive action. I know that was a very fast overview on ZERT. For more information, you can visit the ZOS Communication Server product page on IBM Community. At the bottom of the slide, there is a direct link to things you should know about ZERT that has all kinds of information, webinars, demos, products, documentation, etc. I would highly recommend that as a starting point. Also on this slide, you can see some of the comments we've been getting from users of ZERT. A lot of good feedback, and we are really excited about that. We also have some educational opportunities and open badges you can get. There's one that gives you an overview on networking on ZOS. ZOS Network Security is a new one, and we also have the TCP IP configuration with the Network Configuration Assistant. Thank you for attending this session. Thank you.